Welcome to Dixon Photography. My name is Janis Dirksen and today I want to talk about a camera lens, the Canon EF 24mm f1.4 L version 2. Now this lens costs right now about 1500 euros new. I bought this second hand for 650 euros, which is a really nice price and I find it really interesting that you can buy a lens used and if you like sell it after a week, a month or a year for nearly the same price. So it actually doesn't cost much if you have it in a great condition to sell it afterwards. So I got this one new, the 24mm f1.4 and I took some pictures here in Spain and some pictures in Germany and I thought it's time to just talk a little bit about my experience with this lens. And I want to start with why I bought this lens. Now I have the Sigma 35mm 1.4 which is also a wide angle lens. I have the Tamron 24-70mm to f2.8 IS lens, the 50mm 1.8 and the 135mm lens. So there are a couple of lenses I already have and the 70 to 200 millimeter lens. And there are different areas of photography that I do. There is the, I call it the extraordinary street photography where I talk to people on the streets and photograph them right where I am. And for this kind of work, all I need is a full frame camera and a 50 millimeter lens. And I have the 50 millimeter 1.8 lens, which is super fine. It, it's really lightweight and that's all I need when I'm six, seven, eight hours on the streets uh, nearly every day. I also do architecture photography for banks and for real estate agencies in, my, in the town I live and around it. And I use the 2470 for that often and, and 10 to 80 millimeter lens on the APS-C camera. And I'm going to use this lens as well. Now, the main reason I bought this lens is on wedding days, I have four lenses with me on two cameras. The Canon 135mm lens, which is great. The 50mm lens, which is great. And the Sigma 35mm lens and the Tamron 24-70mm lens. So these two I want to get rid of and choose this one instead. So bye-bye to the Sigma 35 and bye-bye to the Tamron 24-70 and keep this instead. So I only have three lenses. Uh, they are all from Canon. They, are all, they all work great with the autofocus, which is important to me, which is not so with the Tamron and the Sigma lenses. In my experience, they don't work so well with the autofocus. Uh, often it's not on point with the ones I have. I know other people have great experiences, uh, but I chose the 24 from Canon instead of Sigma. And I think I did a, it was a great decision. Okay, so the reason to buy this lens is to get rid of two other lenses, 24 to 70 2.8 and the Sigma 35 1.4. That's the reason why I bought this lens, to have three lenses on wedding days instead of four. And now what I find is whenever I buy a new lens, especially if it's a fixed focal length, I have to learn photography new. What does that mean? Every lens to me has a certain sweet spot in terms of there is a distance in which each lens works great. There is an angle in which each lens works great. And you cannot always do the same with another lens. So for example, what's great with this lens, what I cannot do with the 50 millimeter lens or 135 millimeter lens with this lens, what's great is to take selfies. Now I don't really mean selfies of myself, although this works as well really nice or with a girlfriend, it's really nice, but I use it on wedding days and with couple shoots. So I got the couple here together, I ask her or him, uh, hold up your hand, I, she's holding up her hand and I put the camera like this and shoot, blah, 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 and there are always some nice selfie looking images which I cannot do with the 50 millimeter, but which I can do greatly with the 24 millimeter. So each lens has certain images I can take with them, which I cannot take with other lenses. And so I really like some of the ideas that I can realize with this lens. Now, where are the weaknesses? One weakness that I experience uh, 
right away. <laughs> I like to shoot wide open. And when you put this lens on f1.4, the vignette is very strong, which means that if I shoot into the sky right now, into the blue sky, and I shoot at f1.4, the corners will be dark, very dark, pretty much too dark for a lens that cost 1,500 euros. So now if you take pictures and edit images, you can render out these corners. In your editing program, you can say, put the vignette away and it's gone. That is very easy, it's just one click. When you shoot video, you cannot get rid, with, you cannot get rid of these corners these black corners if you want to shoot wide open you have them with the lens so for, for for the photography purpose it's fine because you can render it out later for the video videographer i think it's not so nice because the vignette is very strong um, now what's also there's a compromise i believe so I like blurry backgrounds. When the background is not clear and in focus, when the background is blurred out and you only see the person, not the background. And I can do this very nicely with the 50 millimeter lens, with the 100, 135, 85. With the 24 millimeter lens, there is a distance in which I get a bl blurry background. So I show you some images I took of Anna, where you see her head and her half body and you see a blurred out background, I'm shooting at f1.4. And I like the look. Now when I go a little bit further away and I'm still shooting at f1.4, nearly everything is in focus. So you will lose the effect very quickly if you go a little bit further away and still want a blurry background, it's very hard to get, even at shooting at f1.4. So if you want a blurry background, there is a sweet spot. And I say compromise or contrast because the closer you get, the more distortion you will also have in the frame. It's a wide angle lens. So when I take a picture like this, my nose will be very big and it's not in the right proportion. It's not necessarily good looking because a wide angle lens will, and you put something close to it, my nose will be very big. So this is what I say, I like the blurry background, but I don't, don't want the big nose. So I have to get close to get the blurry background, but I cannot get too close because then the image will, will be affected at, with, the, with the proportions. And so I have, to get to use, I have to get used to this. And I just bought this lens one or two weeks ago, but I think, it's time to give you some images. And I'm here now in Spain and I'm shooting nearly all the time right now with the 5D Mark I from 2005. I bought this camera for 350, 400 euros. I've seen this now on eBay for 250 right away. And I will show you the images straight from the camera. Uh, I got some really nice images with this camera and lens combination. I have different cameras. The Canon 6D is filming right now. It's a newer camera, but I like to use cheap equipment. Uh, this is a cheap camera, but it's a great, it's a great camera. It was 3000 euros and now it's under 300 euros because it's 12 years old, but it still works great. We will look at some images straight on the, a screen that may be on my phone because it's faster to skip through and maybe in, enlarge and I will talk a little bit about it. So in the end, I, I am really happy that I bought the lens used. It's new, 1,500 euros. I paid used, 650 euros. And uh, I think I can sell it for the same price even in a year if I want to. And in the end, I haven't paid anything for it. And I think it's a nice way to get to use or to get get to know a lens. If it is this lens a lens for me, I can buy it used and sell it used, and it's probably cheaper than renting it. Uh, renting it is nice when you don't have 600, 650 euros or seven hundred euros somewhere lying around. <laughs> but if you have some money in your bank account, it's a nice way to get to know a lens and experience for yourself: is this a lens I want to keep or not?
So I want to show you some of the images, also some videos I took with this lens, try to use it as much as I could wide open on the Canon 6D. And we will see you when I film some of the images straight from the screen and I will talk a little bit about it as well. Thank you very much. So one more time, I have some images for you straight from the Canon 5D Mark I with the 24 millimeter lens 1.4 or the 135 millimeter lens 2.0. So here we are uh, near a shopping center and I have the 135 millimeter lens at f2.2. This is unedited straight from the camera and we can just go through these images right now. And it's a really nice lens. You really get to focus on the person and blur out everything else. This makes a really, really great portrait lens and not just for the face but also for the whole body and half body portraits. So uh, I have the settings here uh, shown so you see which aperture I use, shutter speed, ISO it's 100 or it's ISO 50 so there is no need to go higher. Now I go further away and I get a really nice whole body portrait which is very sharp even at f2.2 and all without any editing and so I think many people don't take a look at the 135 millimeter fixed focal le length uh, lens because it's not so versatile for 135 millimeter you have to go very far away to get a picture like this but when you do it's really rewarding I find these images look really nice just straight from the camera and to me there's no need to edit these images. Now I can edit these images if I want to but I don't have to, they look fine. Now consider that this is an old LCD screen, it's 12 years old camera so the technique is, is old, uh, this, the screen is not sharp so when I zoom in it's probably not looking sharp though on the computer screen it, it will look sharp. Uh, the sensor is really nice. It's such an old camera. It's a dinosaur, I would say, but the images turn out really nice and I really enjoy shooting with this camera. There is no need for a newer camera to take with me here. This is what I get straight from the camera without any editing. And uh, this camera cost about $300 on the second hand market, Canon 5D Mark I. And many people, I think, are looking for a newer camera, a better camera with higher stuff, better frame rate, better megapixel, this and that. And uh, I don't know if you really need that. But this is what you can get out of a really old camera that is very cheap. Of course, I used uh, two great lenses here, but you can use a cheap lens as well if it's a fixed focal length, a 51.8, that's, that's fine. You would get similar results with the 51.8. And you will find many videos on my channel where I used the 100 euro lens and you will get, you will see the, the results. So I just wanted to show you the images straight from the camera and not some images but all of them. So you see how the images turn out and not just the best images but actually the whole series. You see every image I, I take. So I, now I'm changing from the 135 to the 24 millimeter lens. Now I'm at f1.4 and I got more in the background or more of the background in the frame. So we still have Anna here but we see her smaller. To see her face I have to zoom in otherwise you don't see her face. And we have more of the trees in the frame. And I think it's a nice combination, 135 and the 24. You have now these trees here, you see much more of the scenery, but now Anna is very small and you don't see much of her. So I, when I zoom in, you see her, but like this, you don't see much, especially on the on this small screen here. Now I can get really close with this lens and get a really nice portrait. And when I'm shooting at f1.4, how like I'm doing here, I also get a nice blurry background. Now I have to be careful not to get too close because then her face would be uh, a little bit distorted. It's also a nice way to shoot, not into the face but to the back. 
So now I'm at one eight thousandth of a second, f1.4, ISO 50, I believe. So it's it's the maximum settings I can get. This uh, the open aperture f1.4, one eight thousandth of a second, ISO 50 or ISO 100. And I find these images turn out really, really nice. Now I shoot everything in manual, which means the ISO manual, the shutter speed, the aperture, everything, the white balance, everything I set up myself very quickly, one or two seconds it takes me. It doesn't matter if I'm shooting indoors or in darkness or outside in shadows or in sunlight, it's one or two seconds. That's all I need to set up the camera to get images like this. And you see the whole series, it's not a selection, it's you see all each single image. And I've written an ebook where I explain how I get these images out of any camera, how I set up the camera for each shooting, and how to do it really quickly in just one or two seconds. You don't need much time to set up the camera to get pictures like this. Uh, it, it's really simple, and I've tried to put as much in it as possible and to make it as cheap as possible, so it's less than eight euros. And this is what you can get with your camera then. So let me just skip through it. <clears throat> now here again, this is, you see, I'm with the 24 millimeter really close and Anna's face is a little bit distorted. I, I find I'm too close to her now. Now when I get further away, it's, everything is fine. And when I zoom in, I see her fine. And uh, when I'm really close with the 24 millimeter lens, I don't like the result that the lens is making with the distortion. Now these these images are fine. It's the 24 millimeter lens, and now I'm switching to the 135. This is the 135. I go. I'm really further away, and I have much more intimacy in the picture. It's a really flattering image. There is no reflector used or flash or whatsoever. It's just all natural light, how I usually always do it. And you can get really nice portraits with that lens. You need a distance between you and the model, but the results are really nice. So let's just go through it. You see, the, the camera is not so fast. When I'm going from one image to the next, it's, it's not going so fast. But I want to show you the images straight in the camera. And I show you all the images, not just some. So you see how a normal shooting uh, looks like. This is in the factory, still near the shopping center. And then we took some more images outside of the building. And I think they also turn out really nice. So here you see the great landscape behind her, still with the 135 millimeter lens at maybe f2.0. And it's really, I, I really like these images. And I will always edit these all images, but I don't have to. I, I really like these images straight from the camera. There is no need to edit. I will edit, but I don't, I don't have to. Okay, so I think you got an idea of how images can look like straight from the camera. W w doesn't really matter which camera it is. This is a very old camera. And when you know how, what to do, so you will get these images like this with the colors and the look out of any camera. It doesn't really matter if it's a new or old camera. Uh, people say newer cameras give you better color. I don't think that's true. Uh, and you see it here. I think these are really nice colors straight from the camera. And so, yeah, that's it.